Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Room on the Couch video number 56. Dave here from Manchester Rum Festival. Uh, for this episode, I'm actually going to focus on a brand of rum that's probably been around in the UK for several years, I'd say now. Uh, I've done rum fest and in fact, you know what, we did the very first rum fest. Uh, and it was fantastic to have them because it's a brand that you don't see too much around. Uh, or I feel, to be fair, it doesn't get the recognition it deserves. Because I remember having this for the very first time, I want to say about 2013. It was at a trade show in Manchester at the uh, Town Hall. And I experienced it because a gentleman called Jim Meehan, who is the owner and sort of brainchild behind this, which is Banks Rum, uh, did a bit of a presentation. And it was great because I tried it. I was like, wow. It was one of the very first times I tried different rums from different countries uh, coming together. And it sort of blew me to understand that it's not just, you know, the single um, distillery additions that are great. You can also make some fantastic uh, flavour profiles by combining different styles of different rooms from different parts of the world. And pardon me, I thought it would be a really good opportunity to sort of revisit a little bit. So I've got the Banks 5. I've also, part of me, got the Banks 7 as well. The 5 and the 7 are not the years. It is the amount of countries and islands within. So, for example, the first one I'm going to give a go here is Banks 5. 43% ABV. It's a blend of Jamaica, Guyana, Indonesia, Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados. Um, I can say 43%. So, I'm hoping. Like I said, I've had this before. So, I've got a good idea. I sold it, uh, quite a fair bit of it in Swedish rum punches at my bar at Marigot Bay. Uh, it was really, really good, very, very flavoursome. So I've got good memories of this, I'm hoping. Although to be fair, it's been a while since I've had it on its own. And that is key in my mind. If I like it on its own, it's gonna make a really good cocktail. So I'm hoping. But my memories do bring back some, oh yes, definitely. Bit of ripe banana straight away. You get a beautiful candy floss, fresh candy floss sort of, um, Papaya uh, profile as well. Soft, slightly oily towards it. Bit of butter profile, I'd say. Mm. Oh god, that's good. It's a, it's got a raw sugar cane element just on the side of your throat there. So it's not smooth straight away. I'm not gonna lie to you, but. The first thing that comes to my mind is it's such an abundance of flavour profiles coming through. You get that sort of slightly high ester Jamaican funk sort of outlining the, uh, the roundness of it. You get that soft smoothness I pick up with Barbadian rum and the Trinidadian style. The Indonesia, obviously we looked at Nusakana in the last episode. That's an Indonesian uh, rum. I'm getting some similarities in that for sure. I was trying to work out if there's a sort of subtle overarching, you know, you get more Jamaican than the others, but they're all doing their job, which is good. It's a real balance of blend. And it's, when I revisited this before I opened the bar, it reminded me of that first time I tried it at that trade show, which is good for A, the consistency, but B, it's not too dramatic enough to change. You're thinking, oh, I used to like that. What's gone wrong with it? And you start to doubt yourself. That is always, and still today, very consistently good. All right, so that's the five, but this is now the seven. Obviously, you can tell a lot more color in this one, so a lot more aged. You have a barrel-aged blend of Jamaica, Guyana, Indonesia, Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, but for two additions of Guatemala and Panama. Uh, it's still 43% ABV as well, so. Let's give this a go. Bit of a lunchtime a liquid joy. All right. I suppose as expected. Oh, saying that. I was going to say, it's, it's not as powerful on the nose. Not saying the, the five was, you know, really in you, but it's, it was something a lot more there. It's a little bit more subdued. You get the yolk, as expected. A little bit more of that kind of uh, caramelized banana than so the ripe banana picked up with the five. 
definitely more the oak comes through. But like more like, like a subtle cedar oak. Right, let's give it a taste. Interesting, the first thing I thought, sugar cane juice, that agricultural profile really shone through. I think that's gonna be the sort of Indonesian profile element there. But it moves straight onto that really nice, soft, uh, caramel, sort of caramac element. Not, it's, it's, it's fresh. It's not lacking that sort of impact of rum. There's something there, I can't remember what it is. There's like um, a sort of subtle orange burnt element. I don't know if that's the Guatemala Panama because it's something I didn't pick up on the five. Maybe it's the impact of that. There might be a little bit too much going on perhaps. Uh, a lot of blends coming together. I'm not picking out too much Guatemala. It's not sweet as I expected, but maybe that's the, the downside for me. I do automatically think South, Af uh, South African, sorry, South American rums uh, are a little bit more sweeter than the Caribbean style. That doesn't shine through as much. The Panamanian, yep, yeah, I'm getting some similarities to things like Wanabello. Um, not as much funk from the Jamaica. I don't know if it, the ratio sort of differed a little bit more, I'm not sure. But to be fair, still a cracking shout. And that mates, I we um, did a fantastic uh, aged daiquiri. It's a beautiful golden cube colour. I think we, I think I may have put it in a, a twist on a Hemingway, and used the bank seven for that with a little bit of maraschino in there. Oh, it was yeah. I'm I'm, I'm bringing back memories now. Um, so again, the five for me is better on its own than the seven, surprisingly. Uh, but then again, I'm not surprised because that's the good thing with. You know, young rums, they're not as scary to drink on its own. So that is a fantastic shout on its own. Swedish rum punches for sure. Uh, the Bank 7, I would probably say, weirdly enough, for my palate, better in the likes of daiquiris. Still a great liquid on its own, but it, it lacks something for me, I feel. Um, but I do know it works fantastic in a Hemingway for sure. It's a cracking brand, it really is. And I was, like I said at the beginning, really intrigued to give it a go back in the day. And it's still great to see it available now. So ladies and gents, if that's giving you a bit of an inspiration to try some Banks rum, please do go and check it out. You can find it at Mass Remote, Whiskey Exchange, Head to Tipples of Manchester itself. Request a bottle to be ordered for you. The mush, the mush, yeah, I can't speak words. They are more than happy to help you out. Uh, I do know that I think the bank's website has got some great cocktail ideas. So if you're intrigued about that Swedish rum punch, do check it out. Give it a go yourselves. If you've already had this before, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think about the brand uh, and obviously how you like to experience it as well. Other than that, ladies and gents, I will see you all for the next episode of Rum on the Couch in a couple of days. Enjoy.